starting pitchers and pitchers in general are some of the more volatile players in the league. Pitchers can look like absolute superstars and aces in one season and below average the next. Dylan Cease and Sandy Alcantara are perfect examples and only the absolute elite pitchers are able to repeat their performance year in year out. Pitching approaches in fantasy baseball differ and I have attempted to find a very complex balance between pitches that are strikeout machines with a possibly higher whip and pitches that are more oriented towards getting the ground ball with a lower K percentage and lower whip. Overall, you can play around with the rankings based on your approach to pitching and what you prefer. The biggest free agent this offseason was indeed Yoshinobu Yamamoto. The Japanese pitcher is considered absolute ace material and signed a 12-year $325 million deal with a $50 million signing bonus, making it the biggest contract handed out to a pitcher in MLB history. Yamamoto has a 5-pitch mix, with a mid-90s fastball, a splitter as his secondary pitch, a curveball, a cutter and a slider, although he rarely throws a slider. In his last three years, Yamamoto pitched 557 innings to an incredible 1.41 ERA with 587 strikeouts, which leads to a case per nine of 9.48 and he limits walks with a 1.77 walks per nine, which leads to an incredible strikeout to walk ratio of 5.44. And it gets even more insane. He pitched to a 1.16 ERA in 2023. He's considered the most polished pitcher to come out of Japan since Yu Darvish, and drafting him can go one of both ways. Some sort of regression and adaptation period is expected. This is something we've seen for every pitcher coming to the MLB from Japan. But even if Yamamoto ends up near the projected numbers of a 3.75 ERA, with 200 or more strikeouts and 180 or more innings pitched, he could still be a great pickup. With an average draft position of 41, Yamamoto should be available past round 3. I wouldn't necessarily recommend him as your ace, but he's a great option as a number 2 if you believe he can do better than the early projections suggest. Logan Webb was basically the only constant in an otherwise pretty messed up Giants rotation and was very consistent across the entire season. Webb is an absolute workhorse, pitching 216 innings in 2023 which puts him first in the MLB to a 3.25 ERA. He's an absolute ground ball machine, sitting in the 99th percentile for ground ball rate, but that comes with a lower strikeout rate of 22.8%. And that's not all, Webb is a master of preventing walks, sitting in the 99th percentile once again with a 3.6% walk rate and an overall whip of 1.07 puts him 6 in the MLB. He increased his strikeout rate, decreased his walk rate and overall looks like a very all-round pitcher that barely blows up. In fact, he only gave up 6 earned runs once and 5 earned runs twice across the entire season. Webb can bring your fancy pitching staff a good ERA and whip, paired with an elite walk percentage and just below average strikeout percentage, and with an average draft position of 50th, Webb could be a great number 2 pickup for your rotation. Tyler Glasnow could have been a top 5 player in this list if it wasn't for the injury struggles he went through for basically the entirety of his career. He returned in 2023 from Tommy John surgery and pitched 120 innings to a 3.53 RA. Glasnow is an incredibly overpowering pitcher, with a 33.4% strikeout rate, 35.3% whiff percentage and an average fastball velo of 96.3, landing him in the 97th, 96th and 88th percentile for those categories, and his whip of 1.08 puts him 12th in the MLB. His walk rate of 9.2% isn't ideal and is one of the minor negatives on his pitching profile. The obvious problem with Glasnow is his health. The 120 innings he pitched in 2023 is a very sad career high since he made his debut in 2016, and even though he did return healthy, it's questionable if he remains healthy for an entire season. He can bring your lineup a ton of strikeouts paired with a good whip, with a below average walk rate and some injury history. With an average draft position of 42, Glasnow is a great pick, but I wouldn't rely on him as your main man in the rotation for an entire year. The odds of him surpassing 200 strikeouts and 150 innings are low. Kevin Gaussman had a great 2023 campaign with the Toronto Blue Jays and pitched 185 innings to a 3.16 ERA, a second best to his 2021 campaign with the Giants. Gaussman is another strikeout pitcher, and with 237 strikeouts in 2023, he finished second to obvious number one Spencer Strider. However, I'm personally not a huge fan of Gaussman. His expected ERA of 3.85 is wildly different from his actual ERA, 
and his walk rate went from a fantastic 3.9% to 7.2%. Gosman gets hit hard often, sitting in the 20th percentile for hard hit rate, and doesn't pair that with infusing ground balls, only sitting in the 53rd percentile in that category as well and pairs all of this with a whip of 1.18, which puts him 20th in the MLB and last for whip for players mentioned on this list. The projections of the bat have been chosen as the most accurate projection model for pitchers and they expect a decrease in strikeout rate, drastic increase in home run rate and a huge uptick in ERA to 3.84. Gosman can bring your lineup a lot of strikeouts with a decent ERA paired with a pretty bad whip although that's subject to change depending on his walk rate next year. With an average draft position of 28, Gosman could be a great pickup if you're looking for the strikeout heavy approach. If you're in a league where whip and ERA overvalue strikeouts, there might be better options available. Just missing out on the top 5 is Zach Wheeler. Wheeler is an incredibly well-rounded pitcher and pairs that with a lot of innings. He pitched 192 innings in 2023 to a 3.61 ERA and his overall pitching profile is fantastic. He sits in the 92nd percentile for walk rate with 5% and the 75th for strikeout rate with 26.9% which ends up with him being the 6th in the MLB for strikeout to walk ratio. He doesn't give up a lot of hits, with a whip of 1.08, keeps the exit velos low, gets batters to chase a lot and avoids getting barreled. Overall, a very well-rounded pitcher. The single negative is his high ERA of 3.61, still very good, but high for his standards. And both his FIP and his expected ERA support the ERA of 3.61. And that really is for me, the only negative, Wheeler can bring your fancy team a lot of innings, with a good number of strikeouts all whilst limiting walks thus protecting your whip, and with an average draft position of 25th, Wheeler could be a very solid option as your number one pitcher. Up next, and probably a lot earlier than expected, is Corbin Burns. The 2021 NL Cy Young winner is still an elite pitcher, but has been on a steady decline since that magical 2021 season. Burns pitched 193 and two-thirds innings in 2023 to a 3.39 ERA, which is still great. And one of the few consistencies within Burns' metrics is the average exit velo. He's an absolute artist at avoiding hard contact and keeps the exit velos low and protecting your whip. He finished at a 1.07 whip in 2023 and a 0.97 whip in 2022. But now time for the reasons why he's fifth on this list. The strikeout rate dropped just over 10% since 2021, from 35.6% to 25.5%. His chase rate dropped from 35.6% to 30 in 2023. The walk rate increased from an elite 5.2% in 2021 to 8.4% in 2023. Whiff rate you ask? From 36.5% to 28.7%. And that's the story for basically every statistic. Go ahead, have a look yourself. And obviously, I'm comparing that to a season that was a Cy Young season, but the decline continued. When we compare 2022 and 2023, there's still an obvious regression visible. Burns is still an ace, that will easily get you over 180 innings and should get you near the 200 strikeouts. But the increasing walk rate and a regression across all statistical categories is definitely something to worry about. With an average draft position of 18, Burns is one of the first pitchers of the board and will have a lot of eyes on him in 2024. Tarek Skubal has been improving year after year, and did once again in 2023. He did struggle with elbow, arm and leg injuries, which limited him to 8 innings, but he was fantastic in those 8 innings and pitched to a 2.80 ERA. And that's not all. Scooball is in the 100th percentile for expected ERA with 2.3, sits in the 96th percentile for both strikeout and walk rate, gets a lot of hitters to chase or whiff and avoids barrels. And he finished the season with a whip of 0.9. What a season for Scooball, and also the reason why I picked him over Burns. Burns has been on a steady decline, while Scooball has improved drastically year after year. And there's more. The Tigers have a young group of promising players and Scooball could be part of a new generation. He's the undisputed number one and can bring your lineup 150 plus innings pitched with a lot of strikeouts whilst limiting walks. With an average draft position of 49, Scooball could be your ace whilst being available further into the draft. Up next is Spencer Strider and there's a lot to love about Strider. 
He pitched 186 and two-thirds innings to a 3.86 ERA, struck out a ridiculous 281 batters, landing him first among starters with a strikeout rate of 36.6%, decreased his walk percentage for the third year in a row and sits in the 98th percentile for whiff percentage. Oh, and in the 95th for chase percentage and paired all this with a 1.09 whip. Apart from a near 4 ERA, very impressive numbers. And that's the only thing about Strider. Before the All-Star break, Strider's ERA sat at 3.44. Post All-Star break, his ERA flew up to 4.39. Strider is a 2, at max, 3-pitch pitcher, and if one of those pitchers doesn't work as it used to or as it should, it's a lot easier for hitters to predict what's coming or hit him in general. And that's just a precaution, not really a negative. Strider is still an elite pick, can be a strikeout god for your squad with a good whip, good walk percentage and is projected to keep his ERA down in 2024. With an average draft position of 9th, Strider is one of the most wanted starters and is an undisputed first rounder. Max Fried is up next, and honestly deserves a lot more recognition. Fried struggled with injuries in 2023, but when he did pitch, he was elite. He pitched 77 and two thirds innings to a 2.55 ERA. He's another classic ground ball machine, sitting in the 85th percentile and pairs this with a fantastic 4.4% walk rate. Free the voice getting hit hard, gets a lot of hitters to chase and kept the whip to 1.13, which seems high, but that can be blamed on the very small sample size. Freed is in the strikeout machine, sitting right around league average for strikeout percentage, but with a career ERA of 3.03, Case per 9 of 8.8 .8 and walks per 9 of 2.4, Freed is a proven elite arm. Another standout stat is the win percentage. Over 6 years, Freed has a win percentage of over 70%, which isn't something you should chase as a fantasy manager, but it does stand out. With an average draft position of 45th, Freed is a reliable number 1 that allows you to wait with drafting pitchers early on. And in at number 1 is Garrett Cole. Cole is probably still one of the most scrutinized players in the MLB, which might have something to do with his insane contract. But Cole is an absolute ace, and probably the only one left of the so-called previous generation. He pitched 209 innings to a 2.63 ERA and a whip of 0.98. Cole gets swings and misses, strikeouts, limits walks and keeps the home runs to a minimum. He's the all-round package, combining durability, strikeouts, whip, and ERA all in one. But there are some negatives, as with almost every pitcher. Cole is entering his age 33 season, and his expected ERA of 3.48 and FIP of 3.16 indicate that Cole's numbers are deceiving. Main thing with Cole is the hard hit rate and average exit velo. Cole is prone to being hit hard, and that further explains the big gap between the expected and actual ERA. But all in all, the 2023 Cy Young winner is a fantastic asset to have in your lineup and can bring you a lot of innings, with over 200 strikeouts with limited walks and home runs. Just keep in mind that you should expect some form of regression. With an average draft position of 12, Cole is one of the most wanted players in the draft. Honorable mentions for Jesus Luzardo, Yuri Perez, Zach Eflin, Blake Snell and Freddy Peralta. There's a lot of choice in the category just below the top 10. And I could honestly mention a few more that fit the honorable mention criteria. You know the drill. I'm happy to help you guys out with any questions. Just drop them in the comments below. Make sure to check out Salary Cap Sports if you're still looking for a fantasy league or a new way of playing fantasy baseball. You get 50 million to draft your own team with any player you want, and you get four trades a week. Player prices fluctuate based on real life performance which adds another cool element to the game and if you know your way around stats or you subscribe here, which is something you should do anyway, you can really build your own super team. I'm playing over there too, so I hope to see you guys in the leaderboard. Next week we move on to the most volatile of them all, the relievers. I'll see you guys next week. Take care. Peace.